In this video, we're going to talk about Hylion, trading under the ticker symbol HYLN. Hylion was one of the media and stock market's darlings back in 2020. And it's been a while since we last talked about it. And the time, I think, is ripe for an update. We're going to cover the price action over the past few days, the company itself, and the recommendations regarding buying, holding, or selling the shares. If you would like to see more stock analysis videos, please like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. But before today's video begins, I'd just like to clarify a few things about the timing when my videos are recorded, uploaded, and how much they react to the latest market updates. So most of my videos are recorded and scheduled the day before and uploaded for the next day. For five days out of seven, it's a trading day. So of course, by the time the video goes live on my channel, the price would have already evolved from there. If there are significant and very volatile movements during the trading day, obviously they will not appear in the video on that day. But usually, to the extent possible, my analysis will be based on the medium term and not really focused on the intraday movements. The reason why it shouldn't matter that much either way is because most people investing in stocks invest for some kind of reason that takes time to get developed and that their positions are usually kept for at least a few weeks. With that being said, if there are significant stock price movements that happen afterwards, either they will not affect the overall picture or if they're significant enough, they will be mentioned in the next video about the stock with re-evaluations of the circumstances as needed. Hylion is a long-haul truck and EV solutions company operating in the automobile industry. It was founded back in 2015 and manufactures hybrid and electric vehicles. It offers both an add-on for combustion engine trucks and also develops its own line of electric trucks. I was mentioning how far the company has gone up back in 2020. And frankly, we should also face the fact that just how far down the company has been sold off in 2021. On a surface, there isn't that many reason or like motive to support such a sell-off other than the fact that this may be the aftermath of a generalized selling from shareholders who don't want to park their capital in a company and more particular in the sector that others are maybe abandoning. And of course, I'm saying this on a comparative basis. Obviously, this is still a very hot sector, but not nearly as hot compared to back in 2020. Essentially, that is a self-fulfilling prophecy, as the more people decide to unwind their positions in Hylion, the lower the stock price goes. One thing is for certain, and that is the fact that Hylion as a company is still moving forward and has not been impacted negatively by the ongoing price action issues and has not been impacted by negative press compared to some other companies like Nikola or Lordstown. Right now, the market cap is $1.44 billion and the enterprise value is $1.6 billion. For a company that is still in the startup phase and not fully fledged, this is a true bargain. There are 178 million shares outstanding, which isn't that many for a growth stock. It has a very high quick and current ratios, which means that it has a lot of liquidity to meet its short-term obligations, which is just $9.7 million compared to the assets totaling $632 million. Like I said before, there aren't any leverage issues, so it's not like the company is going to have any solvency problems down the road. Its average volume has been around 2 to 2.5 million shares a day, and it remained pretty constant over the past few months, with one exception. On October the 11th, when the trade volume went above 10 million shares, as the stock price touched its bottom. With regards to where the stock price is going to land within the next couple of months, I believe that we will probably see a status quo, more or less the same thing compared to what we're seeing now. And I would say that maybe it'll keep grinding lower, and we have to assume that this is a real possibility. Because there is no particular reason why the stock price will move up now, 
And we will probably have to wait for the next year in order to see any catalysts. My recommendation, despite all the doom and gloom, is to consider buying some Hylian shares now. Because usually, it is precisely when the morale is low that there is a good opportunity to increase your position cheap, so that the average cost basis remains low. An example of this is what happened to Lucid. Lucid shares have been stagnating, and in a very similar way, until the catalysts were announced, and then the price surged up. The key in this case is to buy in low and to sell high, but to buy in early as well, so that the risk can be minimized. I would recommend to keep a position in Hylion so that there is an opportunity to benefit from future catalysts. With that being said, make sure that your position remains at a manageable size, like 1-3%, to so that there can be more room to further average down. There is no profit target just yet, but it's highly recommended to keep your position until somewhere like April to June of 2022. Your investment should also take into consideration the market conditions at the time and the surrounding sentiment that determine what kind of asset should be picked, for how much and for how long, and when you should be selling it. First of all, the financial market doesn't reflect the real economy. That much is a fact. If the stock market is doing great, it doesn't mean that the underlying company is necessarily hiring more people, increasing the wages, and rising the living standards of its employees. Sometimes it's even the exact opposite, because the stock market is a big pool where money comes in and out, goes to different places in order to be placed. The capital may be used to be invested in a company to improve its efficiency and productivity, but it can also be used to buy up shares and assets in order to make a profit. This phenomenon is called financialization, and it means that the more money is been used for non-productive purposes like mergers and acquisitions, paying dividends to shareholders, buying back equity and so on, the less there is for the productive parts. Another way to put it is that ever since 2008, the Dow Jones Index has increased its value significantly. But people don't necessarily see this growth in the main streets. This is why we should be careful with the assumptions of what rising prices mean for a company. Sometimes it doesn't mean anything, other than the fact that the asset is getting more expensive and that their yields is going down. Additionally, some new phenomenons are now palpable, and they are the creation of new bubbles, the participation and influence of retail traders in specific situations, and the anticipation of a massive recession, or at least pullbacks. Bubbles have always been created over and over during the past few centuries, ever since there are financial markets. But nowadays, it's quite interesting to see that the speed at which they are created attract people or capital and then go bust is getting faster and faster. So almost immediately after the major collapse of the market prices back in early 2020, the same market decided to create a massive bubble of the electric vehicle sector or anything that is related to it. So almost immediately after the major collapse of the financial market back in 2020, the market then decided to, one, recover any sort of price that fell during the first three months of the year, and then attract a massive amount of capital into the EV sector, or anything that's related to it. Stock prices across the board, but in the growth stocks in particular, went up to the sky for a moment. And even if it didn't last long, this episode definitely allowed market participants, or many of them, to park in their money in a sector and left with either a lot of profits or at least avoiding incurring large losses because they left their money in blue chips or the sectors that are heavily affected. The involvement of retail traders in companies has also been much more pronounced in recent months. Because in the scenarios of a short squeeze, companies may have short sellers who believe that the stock will decrease in value. 
The short squeeze consists of buying the stock price up to force the short sellers to recover their positions, which will then trigger even bigger increase in stock price. But I'm not saying that this is always rational, and I'm not even saying that companies will always have a very convincing narrative or good fundamentals. Sometimes there's none of that. A good example is with GameStop. If you play video games, ask yourself if you would really always buy your games at GameStop, knowing that you would be buying those games online as well, or knowing that at least you have the capacity, the right to buy those games online in the comfort of your home. But nevertheless, retail traders do have a much more significant influence in the stock price for the better or worse. Personally, I think that as long as the volatility is high, it'll create opportunities. The final phenomenon is the anticipation of a recession. Many people are expecting something of that sort to happen ever since 2008. There were quite a few companies that were supposed to go bankrupt because of the debt structure no longer sustainable or that their business model is just bad. But somehow, that system was able to hold its ground, especially in the North American market. This is partially because the capital around the world chooses to come to American capital market when things get heated back home. This is especially the case when geopolitical tensions increase around the world. In order to make sure that the capital can provide steady returns without being affected too much by central bank policies and inflations, this phenomenon will be intensified over time. The bottom line in all this is that the environment is getting more uncertain and volatile in a context where asset yields will probably remain low because the real economy cannot just improve because the asset prices go up. As far as we're concerned, that means that the patience of market participants over the next couple of years will be a great virtue and that there will be plenty of opportunities to eye for better prices. With that being said, Always make sure to keep your positions diversified and your risk level under check. Your speculative positions should play a relatively modest part of your overall portfolio. So thanks for watching. If you like my content, please like, comment, and subscribe to my channel.